let's talk about Evergrace. As always, when we complete a game, I like to talk about it from a mechanical standpoint, from a story standpoint, and an overall recommend or not recommend. So first off, mechanically, it is a third person action game, essentially. You go around, you move in third person, and you uh, swing your weapon or shoot with your bow. Um, not a lot of depth, really, there um, with the mechanics of that. Uh, there are different weapons that swing differently, attack differently, but more importantly, have elements. Now, the elements tend to play more of a role in Charlene stuff than they do in uh, Darius's story. And that's one of the main mechanics I want to talk about as well. There are two characters. You have two separate characters with two separate stories running essentially parallel to each other. I think Charlene's technically takes place a little bit before Darius's, but they eventually coincide at the end. Um, and uh, so the weapons have elements, and you have to use those elements for certain puzzles. There are puzzles in the game. Most of them are pretty... <laughs> Pretty basic puzzles. It's like, change the color of your armor, wear just your boots, hide your weapon. Like, it, there's not, like, a whole lot of depth to the puzzles overall. Um, how you interact with some of the puzzles is a little obtuse. Um, also, we did not do the side area because I did not, not know the side area existed until much too late. Uh, but there is a side area where you can get the Moonlight Grey Sword. It's a shadow... It's called the Shadow Tower, which... That's a good joke because, you know, Shadow Tower, the game exists. Um, but uh, so I can't speak to the mechanics of the side area, but at least for the main game, that's that's basically the long and short of it. You go from area to area, picking up a thing to unlock the next area, fighting monsters with the different weapons. You can pick up the weapons from monsters. You can pick them up from the shop. Uh, the shop mechanic actually works a lot like Shadow Tower's shop mechanic, where you go to a separate location to do your shopping, uh, and then you teleport back to wherever you were when you went to the shop, which is very interesting because I don't think that continues on uh, as a thing through uh, FromSoft's uh, like series career. I think they may might make like one or two other games where that where that's the case, but um, but yeah. So that's that's kind of the mechanics of it. There's not a lot to talk about. Uh, the elements, basically, the way it works with enemies is if they're weak to it, they take a lot more damage. If they're strong against it, it heals them. That's it. That's the entire element system kind of surmised. There's not a lot to it from there. Um, like I said, the puzzle's very simple. Dye your armor, wear a certain amount of armor, or hit thing with element. Um, so as for story... Uh, we have two separate stories running parallel. We have Darius, who uh, is uh, this kind of warrior figure who who's trying to stop a demon. Um, and he's he's following it through basically this other world. The other world, this this area that, that all of this takes place is apparently an empire that has gone missing. It was a part of the world and then poof, it was gone. Um, that's where both of our characters, Darius and Charlene, end up to do their stories. So he makes his way, he goes through a castle to kind of learn a little bit about the lore of the castle and the Empire, and eventually his story lines up to some of the areas where Charlene is. Now Charlene starts out in the outside and spends a lot of time with like element-based stuff until she gets to a experimental tower uh, run by a villain called Morpheus. Um, and the tower is basically just a, a giant research lab, essentially, for figuring out about these crests. Uh, you can see it here on Darius's hand right here behind me. Um, the crests are apparently bad omens, um, and people hunt people with crests and stuff like that. So you try you also figure out like about the crest as well as like finding out that Morpheus has been doing experiments with crests and with people with the crests. So he's trying to build this super powerful crest based. He calls it uh, crest AI or AI crest. Um, so I guess he's trying to create like a super robot crest monster thing. Um, 
but uh, anyways, so they, Charlene's uh, goes through the experimental stuff, whereas uh, Darius goes more through the Empire stuff. And then they meet up near the end to deal with Morpheus and his uh, menagerie of monsters, if you will. Um, and uh, you, you learn a bit about there's some other characters that you learn a bit about uh, as you go through. Uh, without any, spoiling anything, there the the Sienna character is is someone who is in both stories and continues to be in both stories because it's it kind of uh, it it's a connecting thread for a few things. It makes sense in context, but until you get to the very end of the game, it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so that's that's basically the story of it. Nothing nothing grandiose, nothing to really write home about. It doesn't feel like they were really trying to push forward with like some like really deep story or anything um i feel like this was showing off a lot of systems um mechanically with how you do like repairing and how you do upgrading and how you do like you equipped abilities based on the like the level of your equipment so there's there's a lot of i i think there was a lot of focus on mechanical over story so we'll get to the overall here overall i think the game is fine I think the game is overall fine. I don't think it's something I would say, ooh, you need to rush to the store and play this game. Um, I think it's just one of those that if you've got 20 bucks to throw at a game, it's 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 worth checking out, I think. Um, I I don't think, with, with all the mechanics that are in place, I don't think they really take advantage of the mechanical depth. It's more just a bunch of systems working in conjunction to to just add to the experience instead of making something a little deeper than that but uh yeah i believe this game let me double check the price for you i believe the game is about 20 bucks which for for this game i think is fine um evergrace yeah it's about 20 20 to 25 bucks uh for a physical copy of evergrace which is somewhere there it is uh, which is there, right there. So, and that's for a complete copy. If you just want a disc, it's cheaper than that. I try to get my discs complete so that I have manuals and stuff. Um, but yeah, overall, I think I do recommend it. It's a nice little game you can play. It's it's definitely a one of a kind experience, at least until we find something that plays it. This game does have a prequel sequel uh, or sequel prequel uh, called Forever Kingdom. I don't know if we'll check that out, but if we do. You'll find it here on the channel. Uh, but yeah, overall, give it a, give it a look. Uh, I would say check out some gameplay. If the gameplay looks interesting to you, maybe pick it up at a local game store or online. It's super cheap, you know, anywhere from 20 to 25 bucks. Uh, not going to not gonna break the bank for you, most likely. So check it out. It's called Evergrace. And uh, thank you so much for watching this review. I do appreciate everyone uh, over there on YouTube. Uh, if you want to catch us live, we are at Mask of Games, basically everywhere. So so catch us over on Twitch. We, we stream Sunday through Friday, and I'd love to see you over there. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next review.